I'm talking today with Kelvin Harrison Jr., one of the stars of the new film Serrano. How's it going? I'm good. I'm good. How are you? Good. I'd like to start at the beginning. How'd you get involved with this uh, project? Um, I got an email and, and said that Joe Wright wanted to meet me. <laughs> and I was like, huh, that's that's an email I don't get every day. <laughs> I'm interested. What does he want to talk about? I was like, when you get on the Zoom, he'll tell you in person. So eventually we went through a series of trying to schedule it. I finally got on Zoom with him. He told me we wanted to do an adaptation of Senator Bergerac. I told him I never heard of it. He <laughs> sent me the screenplay. <laughs> I read it and I fell in love with those three characters, especially Christian. And um, I, I I told him my interpretation of it. I did a self tape, and then next thing you know, I was in Sicily. <laughs> well, he's an interesting character, Christian, because I say he's a nice person. He's a well intentioned person, but that's not to say he's not a deceitful person. So, how did you approach that with Joe Wright and working out how to portray the character? Yeah, I think. Um, I think one of the beautiful things that I loved about Christian is that he came into this with so much innocence and so much sincerity, and he's a very trusting young man. And I think what I what he gets mixed up in is 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 not necessarily having the confidence or the understanding of what how this particular community works. And he trust and trust is his um, his relationship with Roxanne in Cyrano. So I, I think Joe really just wanted to just keep it. Just keep him, keep him, keep him kind of naive and innocent, and um, and that's why he kind of almost falls into this this trap of deceit. Not necessarily that he was um out to 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 to, to fool the girl he loved, you know. We we saw you sing on screen last year with the high note, which did get a cinema release here in Australia, which was oh, great to see. So, yeah. So, how comfortable were you singing this time around? Or was it different? You know, was it a different beast being a full blown musical? Oh, it was different from being a football musical. I know it was cool because, you know, I, you feel like a real pop star. You go into the studio, you work with, like, these big, like, um, producers, like Dark Child, who's worked with Whitney Houston and Michael Jackson, and then you go and do, like, a music video recording on set. This is, like, we're singing live, and, you know, we're dancing, and it's the, the music is so much more intimate um, in so many different ways, and the lyrics are so just profound and so it just feels like it feels like you're doing a proper musical but you're doing it all day and, and many different takes because <laughs> singing on set as opposed to recording studio it seems to be becoming more common with uh with movie musicals and i see that's the approach joe Wright used here so was that easy to embrace i think it's more natural you know i think it's actually harder to pre-record i mean it's it's, it's a safety blanket for actors to kind of go, oh, we're going to pre-record it and we don't have to worry about how we sound because we're not like proper Broadway singers. But I also think that it's a little unnatural when you have to lip sync <laughs> to your voice that you recorded like three months ago and you're not feeling the same way yeah. and you don't even know if it's going to sound right in the location. So I, I, it, it kind of works better in a lot of ways. Some beautiful locations part of the production. What can you tell us about the Sicilian town? Uh, Noto, is that where most of it was shot? Yeah, yeah, it's I mean it's beautiful. I mean, they they invited us into their home and and such a such a sensitive time, you know, in the middle of the pandemic and they were so hospitable and they, you know, they fed us. They 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 gave us a good time. There would be you know, street musicians playing, you know, dinners and stuff like that. And it would be really it was just nice to kind of be in this world that felt kind of fantastical and supported this this um this 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 the Cyrano space that we existed in, where you can walk down the street and see Regano's Bakery, you can see Roxana's apartment, you can see Dakeisha's house, you can you can see the theater in our own backyard. We built it literally in our where we were living, so you can walk downstairs and then suddenly everybody was there. So it it, it helped us kind of immerse ourselves into into this fantastical space that Joe Wright created. You just mentioned COVID. I mean, did that have a big impact on the shoot? Perhaps what you couldn't couldn't do off screen in particular, I guess? Oh, yeah. I mean, let's def we definitely had a proper lockdown and, you know, we quarantined and everyone was wearing masks. And I think the biggest difference for performance is so much of our job, in my opinion, is about connection and and, and relating to the crew members and, 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 and talking to the other cast. So when you have the, you know, red zone, yellow zone, green zone, it's a little bit more isolating, but at the same time, any obstacle is sometimes a gift because it really forces you to make the most out of the moments you have. So when those masks come off, you're really hungry for those, those meaningful connections with your, with your castmates and with the crew. Um, so in, in some ways it's a, it's, it was, you know, an obstacle, but also kind of a gift.
I read an interview with Joe Wright. He, he spoke about the war scenes that we see in the film near the active volcano Mount Etna, which erupted or something like that. Were you were you there for that? Oh yeah, dude. We we the first couple of days, you know, we were shooting there. I mean, listen, Mount Etna gave us trouble since day one. We, as soon as we decided to shoot up there, Mount Etna was like, I don't know about that, fellas. <laughs> but um, but the third day, I remember walking. We, everyone was calling and texting each other, and we looked outside our windows, and we can see the we are, we're in a hotel like a little bit away from the, the the volcano, obviously, and we see it's just like spouting out lava. <laughs> And we were like, oh, so are we, are we working today? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It, it's, it's, it's a love story, but you do get to spend a lot, a lot of time alongside Peter Dinklage, and you're both terrific. So how did you bring the best out in each other? Uh, I mean, Pete's just a great dude. He's a, he's a professional. He's a, literally a, one of the most brilliant actors of our generation or of the time. And... Um, it's just it's such a gift to work with them. Like we, we honestly, we just kept the banter going. And one of the first things uh, I was like, Pete, um, I, you know, I just want to stay in your good graces, man. You know, how do I do that? He was like, just keep laughing at my jokes. And I was like, well, <laughs> easy enough. <laughs> I'll just do that, man. <laughs> And with any period piece movie, you know, one of the fun things you can have is with the costumes and we see you here wearing the really baggy clothes, the big puffy sleeves. Is it is that comfortable? Is it is it fun getting to, you know, get dressed up and sort of part of the character? It's cool at the fitting. <laughs> at the fitting, you're looking at it like, oh, man, this looks so cool. I got a sword. You know, I got this like nice, like I got these cool boots and stuff like that and these beautiful shirts. And then you like on like day 15, really. And then you kind of go, ah. My back hurts. <laughs> heavy. I was like, these guys really did walk around in all these layers. And then you have like five people dressing you every day because it's so detailed. I was like, I wouldn't personally do it, <laughs> but um, I respect it. And just to wrap sort of things up, you're in my woods, neck of the woods recently shooting Elvis under the guidance yeah. of Baz Luhrmann. So it was here in Queensland in Australia. So what did you do? They say that say that last part again. I said to say, what, what can you what can you tell us about it? Ah, first of all, I love Australia. It was beautiful, and I when I got out of the quarantine, um, I literally finished this movie and then dropped in there. Did the quarantine on past? I think I got out this day after New Year's, and I cried because I was like, I was so glad you guys just like followed the COVID rules, and I got to just <laughs> walk around and eat and be a normal person. But um, Elvis is gonna be sick. I mean, Baz is Baz. Baz is Baz is literally an event in, in in one person. So you already know his films are going to be just a spectacle and exciting. And it, it's, it's going to be a lot of fun. And all I, I all I can say is just that the cast is incredible. And I, I've had such a great time making that movie. And um, I, I know everyone's going to love it. I know everyone's going to love it. And anything else you've got coming up that we should keep an eye out for? Uh, I mean... Yeah, I and mean, nah, I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. Yeah. <laughs> it's all right. Well, look, for the moment, we can enjoy you in Cyrano. Uh, it's a terrific performance, a really fun musical. I think people are going to dig it. So, Kelvin, thanks so much for speaking with us. Thank you so much for having me.